Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making a Marion Martin skirt out of a deep gray fabric for an all creatures great and small themed outfit. All right, my dears, many of you know from the last video that this particular make was supposed to come out last week prior to season three premiering here in the US of All Creatures Great and Small. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do this video last week, so we are diving right in this week, and I am very excited. Now, I chose this particular Marion Martin pattern because I thought it looked very, very similar to this skirt that Helen wears in season two in the episode where she and James get engaged. And as luck would have it in episode one, season three, she wears the same outfit and the same skirt. And while this isn't an exact match, this particular pattern is from 1954 as opposed to the late 30s. I think this particular season is supposed to be 39, 1939, 1940. Um, I do think that it's similar enough and it's just a beautiful skirt and I really wanted to make it. I've actually been wanting to make it since I saw that episode back in season two of that red skirt. So I'm very excited about the make today. I do already have the pattern pressed out and on the material over here and I'm just ready to get stitching. So let's go guys. All right, and here we have, we have our back panel of our skirt. And as you can see, I did go ahead and shorten the length of it to better suit me. This is the front panel of the skirt here, and this is the front inset. This skirt, as you can see here, has this really beautiful inset piece here on the front, very similar to that skirt in the show. We also have these big, fabulous, decorative, but also functional pockets here. And so what we need to do is we need to start by assembling the panels of the skirt. On the whole, this is really just a front of a skirt and a back of a skirt with just this one little difference in detailing because the pockets are actually top stitched into place. We are not going to have to worry about doing anything inset. We're not going to have to worry about creating a pocket bag that's hidden away or anything like that just about everything is going to be tucked into seams but put over the top. So we have two basic panels. We'll have the front panel which we will create by putting that front inset into place and then having the two side pieces. And then the back panel also in two pieces. So let's go ahead and start pinning and get this center panel here put into place and ready for the front and back portions of the skirt to be able to be put together once we have our pocket detailing set. We have the front panel of the skirt put together, which means we can move on to the next set of our in instructions. Now, the next thing that they want us to do is to work on our pockets, because what they're having us do is completely assemble the front of the skirt before we attach anything to the back. And the reason that we're going to do that is because we are going to go ahead and hide the raw edge of the pocket in the side seam of the skirt, which is great because we're not going to have to worry about folding anything over or top stitching very close to a side seam. So what we'll do is we will get our pocket pieces put together. We're going to go ahead and get everything basted together, flipped, pressed, and then we can work on putting these pieces together on our skirt and top stitching everything into place. All right, my dears, I uh, took a quick break, getting a little bit of peppermint tea to kind of revive. I did go ahead and get the pockets put together, which is to say I did go ahead and get this flap folded over. I got it hand basted down with an invisible stitch so you can't see it on the outside. I also went ahead and turned in all of these raw edges. So now when we top stitch this 
onto the front of our skirt, everything will be turned in and nice and clean. We won't have any raw edges that can fray over time. I did also get our little button bands completed. I stitched them, clipped them, flipped them, pressed them, and then I think it is because of the type of fabric I'm using. It's <clears throat> a suiting fabric and I'm assuming it's probably polyester. Um, it just didn't seem to really want to lay flat and behave and I thought over time it could look bad after being washed, especially if it lost its shape. If this loses its shape and is all crinkly and wrinkly, it's just not going to look very attractive and attempting to iron something like this once it's stitched in place is going to be a nightmare. So I did go ahead and stitch along the outside again, doing just the tiniest, tiniest amount of seam allowance, barely anything just to flatten this out and really give it a clean edge and a clean finish. So what we need to do now in order to complete the front panel of our skirt is to get our pockets in place and our button bands in place. Uh, the original pattern, I've gone ahead and folded it up. Before I did that, however, I did mark with my chalk pen where all of my notches are so that I can go ahead and line up the pockets on the sides of the skirt here. I also marked the notches where the button bands go so that I can get those lined up as well. <clears throat> now this is kind of slippery material and they do recommend in the instructions anyway basting these into place before you get them put on to the front of the skirt. So I do think I'm going to do that. I would say sometimes depending on the type of fabric it was if I felt really secure I might not. I might just allow the top stitching that the pocket is going to utilize. I would just use that to hold it in place. But I think because I don't want this to accidentally slip or slide while I'm putting that top stitching in, I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick baste in place here. And then we'll get these pockets set up here. Now that we have the entire front of the skirt put together with the pockets in place, it's time to move on to step six, which is getting the back skirt put together. So we're going to start by stitching up the back of the skirt. Now I did think this was a back closure, um, but after rereading the instructions, um, it's actually a side closure, which we can see right up here. So I am going to go ahead and stitch up the back panel um, with the tightest stitch all the way up the back seam. And then we can start attaching the entire back panel to the sides of the front of the skirt, making sure to leave the one side open for our side closure to go into. But first things first, let's go ahead and get this back panel skirt put together and then get it attached to the sides of our main skirt, our front skirt panel. And here we have our back panel put together, which and this is where my battery died <laughs> officially. And unfortunately, I really didn't realize in time and I did not capture the construction of the waistband of the skirt um, of applying that or of doing the fastenings. So why don't we take a quick look from the editing floor at the instructions that come with the waistband construction, take a quick peek inside the skirt, and then move on to our final reveal. All right, my dear, so we can see here our waistband construction. We can see the front, how it kind of pops up a little bit. The back is a bit more straight. Now we are being shown here in the instructions to go ahead and put the interfacing to the inside of the waistband to tack that interfacing to the waistband itself and then stitch across and join the two sides here. Then join the waistband facings in the same manner. So we're going to go ahead and cover with that same fabric, flip, turn, and stitch before going ahead and adding the waistband to the top of the skirt. So what does that all mean? For this waistband that I completed here, what I did was I cut out two pieces of the fabric for the outside 
and the inside so that this is going to match and just be really nice. I then cut out the same size in a mid-weight interfacing, which you can kind of see peeking out here. And then I did the beginnings of the sandwich technique. So I did fabric, fabric, interfacing. And it needs to be that way so that when you flip it, you then have fabric interfacing fabric. We'll do a quick little show of what that would look like. If I were lining this up to put the waistband together again, I would have the fabric for my skirt and my lining here and then my interfacing here. Then once I've stitched across the top, I take this piece here, I fold it over and pull it around. And now I have the sandwich of fabrics. I've got the fabric on the back, the fabric on the front and the interfacing in between. And that's the method that I used for the waistband of this particular skirt. I did choose the midweight interfacing to give this skirt waistband a bit of structure and help it hold up on its own and I think that was a good call. The other thing is that I did go ahead and use hook and eyes for my side fasteners. It was not really my first choice but honestly after putting this together and getting it on and having a nice test fit I do actually think these work really nicely. It's working for me so I'm happy with it. I do like zippers a lot, but I think for this particular skirt, this was actually a good call. So here we are, waistband of our skirt. And now on to the reveal. All right, my dears, let's talk, wrap up on our Marion Martin skirt from 1954. This was a fun make. It turned out to be quite a bit more challenging than I had thought. I completely assembled the front panel of the skirt, then assembled the back panel of the skirt, and actually when I was attempting to put them together, which I unfortunately didn't catch on camera because my battery died, I realized that the front panel did not fit into the back panel of the skirt. I tried to look at seam allowances and rework things and it turned out that the front panel was just too big, even with proper seam allowance. I completely took the skirt back apart, measured the front panels, and I'm not sure guys, I actually think that the front panel of this skirt is made for a 33 to a 34 inch waist and the back panel says that it is supposed to fit a 24 to 32 inch waist or a 30 inch waist according to this particular envelope. So I think maybe back when this pattern was being packaged up we ended up with a bit of a mismatch here and so we did a little bit of reworking. I did a little bit of reworking. I did take the excess fabric out of the front panels of the skirt and then replaced the placket before putting everything back together. Now, thankfully, I did not have to remove the pockets or anything because the pockets are placed here on the sides, which do have the hip shaping in them. And so I was able to remove the excess fabric from this center panel here without dramatically impacting the overall look of the skirt. After I figured that out, the rest of it was actually a breeze and was actually just as simple as I had hoped that it would be. And it was actually a very fun make. I also found that the skirt ended up looking a little bit different than I was thinking it would have, even based on the drawing. And I'm very, very happy with it. Absolutely thrilled. It kind of comes up a little higher under. Um, the bust line and around the rib cage and I like it because I feel like it creates a nice flattering shape comes up instead of trying to come in at the waist which is not bad but I feel lately I've been having some of those and fitting it right at that natural waist hasn't quite worked and this skirt really did work nicely for that. Also 
I would like to take a moment to talk about the pockets on this skirt. So I wore this skirt around town today running errands with my family and I had my phone in my pocket, I had my wallet in my pocket, my keys, everything fits in the pocket of the skirt. Like, let's go ahead, just, hello. <laughs> I mean, that is a serious pocket. I, I can't believe how good these pockets are. And honestly, even when I had things in the pockets during the day, I didn't feel like it was creating this horrible, unsightly bulge. The way the skirt hangs, it, it actually kind of tucks things away because that was my other concern was we'd have pockets and then it would always be kind of, you know, pulling up or pushing out and it didn't, things just slid right in and, and it worked beautifully. So I'm very excited to use this skirt to have it in my wardrobe. It was a very fun make. And while it is not the same skirt that Helen wears in season two, as well as now season three, I think it's a lovely, match. <laughs> it's a good comparison. It's a good substitute um, from the stash without having to jump out and buy anything new. And I certainly had fun putting together a couple of different outfits to make my all creatures great and small outfit. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the make. And if you like vintage patterns, if you like hanging out in the sewing room, and if you like making costumes, please hit that like and subscribe button. I would love to have you along with me on my journey. Thank you guys so much. Goodbye.